Okay. All right, we'll get going here. I might have some back background noise here. I've got uh, doing this in operations as we're having some work done in the in the office right now, facility wise. So, all right, well, welcome everyone to the next uh, webinar here for Forecast Builder with a, a lot of news with respect to updates uh, forthcoming to your system. Uh, so let me just get right in right into this. First, uh, as as always, a reminder about our our V Lab site where we're continuously posting uh, data here, and you know you can just you know, most of you should have the V Lab link, and uh, of course you always have to sign in, so I don't have the page up here immediate, immediately. But this, um, so yeah, we'll always go to this, and we try to uh, again put news on when. Like like for this webinar where the time had changed uh, because of some other calls going on this afternoon, uh, so that's you know, that's there for you. The FAQs continuously continuously updating. Uh, we're trying to get the things on the forum as fast as possible, uh, and, and as well as you know responding to feedback that comes through emails. All right. So today's topics uh, we've got. Of course, uh, as always, I like to start off with some positive news. Uh, we've got then some stuff with the science. This, again, the technical updates quite a bit there, and the usual outstanding issues, timeliness. We've got some, a new topic there for timeliness issues uh, that are kind of creeping up a little bit, uh, and then some stuff on future development, and then our open discussion period. So, oh, oh yeah, uh, looks like I got a bad it bad image there so let's just let me go back into this all right so the snowfall forecast from uh, the Christmas storm uh, I want to go go into this because something I thought was really impressive when uh, I had I I was away with family but I had one of my co-workers here at lacrosse take an image from the big and uh, I was just really really impressed by the uh, how consistent we had this really tight gradient uh, uh, in the uh, snowfall encompass in numerous you know forecast offices and it's consistent all the way across i mean that's just i think just really really impressive and then if you go to the uh actual observed snowfall and really the gradient was only about you know 20 to 30 miles to northwest the actual absolute values underneath the um underneath the heaviest snow were still about you know <laughs> we're about the same as you know as forecast. It was just shifted a, a little bit for you know for this. So I thought that was again just really impressive to see. Um, you had you know you had the gradient. I mean it was just again just a slight shift. And I know that um, a lot of that shift ended up being with you know freezing rain and sleet, warm air getting pulled up a little bit more north, more to the northwest and Aberdeen's area getting into ice storm stuff and part of Chan and Grand Forks. So uh, pretty. Uh, Pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy event, and of course we ran into issues with um, with too many weather types, which I'll discuss uh, a little later here. Uh, ice accumulation was also very nice and uh, consistent here too. That uh, I mean, you know, I think you you go to past you go to past years. I don't think we'd ever see an ice accumulation forecast look look like this. Uh, so I think that's again just a really positive. Uh, Positive impact, and a lot of the areas that you see here with the ice cream forecast ended up with ice accumulation. Uh, so it's not like you know it was an inaccurate, um, not not just so it's consistent and uh, accurate, but better stated. And again, this ice accumulation was due to uh, two different uh, environmental factors. Some of it was met was due to the warm warm air aloft. Some of it was because uh, you had a loss of ice in the clouds. Uh, so two factors coming into play to produce this ice cream. And some of you may remember here just recently down in our uh, to the southern southern and southeastern U.S. here where we had a recent uh, snow mix, mixed precip types uh, storm. And uh, I kind of want to just kind of look back at this uh, this event because you know I think back to our goal which was to go for a more consistent you know both you know maintaining accuracy but also be much more consistent and i mean these uh, these images were basically us not too you know not too long ago before we started this experiment and uh i mean you know this is where we've you know where we've come where we've come so 
uh, again, I think that's just a, a testament of what, what's been going on. I know certainly mixed precip events are, are challenging. Uh, they, they, they should be, you know, you got gradients that move with time and with model cycles and, and that. So, um, and it's a lot, can be a lot of work and a lot of remembering how to do things and maybe your first time. So you might be learning on the fly, but I think, again, it's a good, good job to everybody out there. In the science department, um, let's see here. The first, uh, and this is still, I, I checked here last week, and the uh, high-res ARW um, is still got that problem with snow cover. So, uh, and again, EMC is aware of the problem. Uh, prob ice, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, with the next uh, National Smart Knit release, which I'll be on a call here right after this to look and see if we can get this release out. You, uh, very, very soon here. Um, prob ice is changing uh, to be one now that it's not just a loss of ice, but we're also going to look at, you know, can, uh, is that bottom, say like bottom one kilometer mostly saturated to to allow for a pre, you know, a, 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 like kind of a typical drizzle or even, or, you know, if it's deep enough a rain, but the idea of being that you now have a, you still have a loss of ice, but you have now a deeply saturated lower, lower level, lower levels of the atmosphere. Uh, and that definition that uh, I have there on the screen is that the lowest one kilometer have a mean RH of 85% to get a value, a value less than 100. And uh, we've been running that here lacrosse for oh well, well over a month, uh, and we've also put it on our cron for now over a month. And uh, it's had pretty good, uh, pretty good su success. Uh, it's been a great, uh, I know forecasters have said it's been a great assay tool for keeping an eye on uh, potential dry slots from waves coming, th you know, waves coming through that could, you know, scour out that ice and still keep keep icing going. I mean, you look at all the events that we've had in the last month, um, like you know, the most notable one being the December 16th, 17th. Uh, uh, just light icing event from Missouri eastward to Baltimore where they end up with so much, you know, actually be can even Kansas eastward to Baltimore that they had all this, all these accidents and a lot of it was just from a loss of ice in the clouds um, that, you know, we need this, we need this grid. Uh, we need it to basically be populated, otherwise it's going to be a misdiagnosis of the P-type and wrong impact and, you know, <laughs> everything going on from there. So, uh, again, getting down to the gist of this, again, Prava. Prob ice, we're going to put it on uh, with this um, update to the National Smart Net. When this tech order comes out, the test bed offices uh, will now have prob ice on cron. Uh, so just uh, that will mean forecasters will need to look at it, especially when there's a pop in the forecast. And we're going to get some new training out for prob ice. Want to give you some. Uh, a little quick overview of what the prob ice change looks like um, on the on the screen here. This was actually from the previous webinar, but uh, I went there from from A to B here on the uh, on this line and on the southwestern side towards point A. You have a too dry, you know, the, the sound is just too dry, which gives which would yield 100. Now, in the past, in the old prob ice, that would be a zero, and now it's going to be 100. And then the environment that is favorable for drizzle, freeze, and drizzle, where you have the, you know, that saturation, saturation up to one kilometer, but your temperatures are still warm enough to contain super cool droplets. Um, now you're gonna, you'll get that zero, and that's the same as before. And then similarly, as same as before, an environment favorable for snow, you'll get 100 prob ice. So really, in this example, the main difference is that area on the left where you're going to be assigned, um, assigned 100 for the for the value. So now, how? Then let me do a couple of soundings uh, rather than just doing that on the plan view or a cross section. So let's take this sounding example, where the old pro, old prob ice method. You know, you've got this saturated layer above three kilometers, but it's all dry below that. So the old prob ice would have given you a zero value, and that's really, I mean, that's for most, that's what you got out, out there right now. Um, and really, if you look at the sound and, and with that dry air, you could actually consider it a case of where you wouldn't need a pop. Um, 
But the new ProbIce uh, way that's going to handle this is that says, hey, the depth of the moisture isn't up to one kilometer, so now I'm going to assign a 100 value. I'm going to do a two more two more examples, and I'm going to open this up for some questions before I continue on with the rest of the presentation. The next uh, this example here, um, which was one down in uh, Des Moines area, Mason City specifically, with this on, with this on, and you're, you're dry, um, you're dry up above. So this one would contain some super cool the uh, droplets. The the, sat, the the saturation area is there from you know about zero to half a kilometer, and uh, the temperature that the the warmest the temperature gets in there is about minus four minus five. So again, that's all super cooled. Uh, so the value from the old prob ice would yield zero. However, the new prob ice would say, hey, you don't you're not up to one kilometer of depth. So we're going to give you the value of a hundred. Hmm. You know, again, the prob ice is really trying to target those in environments with the deep saturated layer uh, that's favorable for precipitation. Or precipitation production. One more, one more example here would be one, a kind of a cedar feeder type situation. But in this case, the dry, the dry air um, would overwhelm that that process. And if you were getting any precipitation, it would come out of those lower levels. So in the old pro, old prob ice, uh, the way it would handle this is, you know. The, the cedar feeder applies, so then it goes down to that lower level. It gives you a value of zero. Well, the new prob ice, there's no change because the depth of the saturation is up to one kilometer, um, and that mean RH within a layer is greater than 85, so it's still zero. Um, with that, I want to open this up to some questions, um, a little question and answer uh, period. And does anybody have any questions on this new prob ice? Again, like I said, there's going to be some training updated um, for this. Um, again, like I say, it's, it's main goal is now to really target environments to make to make this a grid that we can put on cron something that we can utilize more uh, more effectively in operations than in the past. All right. All right. Let's. Uh, with no qu no questions, I'll continue on. So let's get into the let's get into this tech order that uh, we've been working on for the last uh, about the last month here. Uh, lots of updates coming out with it um, for the 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 for the ITO GFE focals. This will be actually the tech order actually should be pretty pretty easy. Uh, it's it's going to be probably about an hour and a half to do. Um, to go through it, uh, but because we've done a lot of updates on the tech side to make the installs easier, but on the flip side, there's a lot of a lot of kind of changes here going on. So and the biggest one, uh, well, actually one of the bigger ones, is the Canadian. Um, everybody will ha now have the Canadian out to 240. Um, <clears throat> it's three hourly to 84, and then six hourly thereafter. Uh, so this will. Uh, this will affect, you know, like your super blend pops, for example. Uh, it will also affect the top-down blends um, because we now have more vertical information for these data sets um, for both the Canadian regional and Canadian uh, NH. So that's and that's actually good good stuff because right now our current top-down blends have been just the GFS and the NAM, and and so I mean, yeah, they can have differences, but they're sort of there, there's similar there's similarities there, so now we can actually get another model source that's kind of outside to give a little bit more, uh, a little bit more spread, if you will, um, or if, um, or at least another model thinking, um, a little more dispersion to the set, the model data set. That's here. We're going to bring in some SPC SRS thunderstorm prob probabilities to uh, add those to AWIPS and GFE, and that's actually going to give us the ability to uh, initialize the probability of thunder from a blend. Um, so the non in the non precipitation type step uh, where there's pop thunder, that option will be there. Um, that you can click on that and blend the and uh, populate thunder from that. 
There's also the, uh, digital, the digital aviation is included within Forecast Builder with this. Outside of within that aviation populate, there's that diurnal queue option that's relatively new. That is not included yet. Um, however, the rest of it, the rest of it is. So aviation finalized, aviation populate, all those things are now in, built into Forecast Builder. You just a uh, flag that you turn on in the diurnal, in the, uh, in the Forecast Builder config. There will be a couple of, uh, there, I, I, there's another one here, but a couple of RAM adjustments here uh, that, uh, that like one of them is that curve for, you going to apply a curve for freezing RAM probabilities. That's kind of off of some stuff that we learned back in November uh, during some icing events there to help, uh, with, help with that. You're going to now have an OBS grid for snow amount and ice accumulation. Uh, Let's see here, and also some snow amount verification. I mean, yeah, it's it's probably not perfect, but it's at least something to give us some kind of an uh, OBS for kind of a a, ver a verification. We're gonna use some of the top down use some of the top down approach to get at it. Your isocum grids will highlight, so I think that's kind of like a nice SA tool when you when you run the snow snow isocum that those will highlight for you, so you can quickly see, hey, do I have ice in my forecast? As mentioned about the prob ice, you also have that ability to rerun super blend. Uh, some, you know, I know that in the past sometimes there's failures for super blend. You can rerun it now. Uh, it's underneath the GFE actually product script uh, menu. Another one of the big big parts to this tech order is a massive performance improvement to to the weather creation process. Uh, I went went spent uh, about a week. And really went through and completely revamped it. Uh, and, and when you get into mixed precipitation events, you'll be amazed at how fast it flies compared to the old one. Uh, and with this whole revamp, it is extremely hard to exceed the number of weather types anymore. In fact, even if it even if it does reach the number, it will alert you that hey, there's too many weather types. Uh, but I tried very, very, very hard to break it, put like eight, eight precipitation types, six non-precipitation types, and did my whole entire domain, and I still couldn't break it. So I'm feeling really good. So that whole issue that we had during with that Christmas storm with a few offices, that, that should be fully rectified now. Uh, Another thing with the wind, wind gust, uh, I know we have an issue out here where if you modify the forecast, let's say the the, the output from, say, the super bond, for example, for the winds, uh, you don't have, like, anything for do, doing the gust. And right now, the, the you know, the integrity check that's out there right now is just, hey, is the wind gust greater than the wind? Well, we need something mo more. So uh, using some of the regression equations that uh, – are, are out there for the Central Plains, Upper, Missis, Upper Mississippi Valley, and the Great Lakes to have, uh, have one basically regression equation in there that's going to basically check now to make sure that your forecast um, your forecast wind gust is higher than that reg than, you, than the regression. So that's a nice. It's just a nice again integrity check, you know, as it you know as part of that step four to make sure that that wind gust is is still good. The other another issue that we had that we've had was um, the with the diurnal procedure, especially out in days four through seven, when the super blend only has six hourly data. Sometimes, especially non-diurnal situations, it wants to do some really you know funky stuff with the with the hourly temperatures. Um, and so the way we're going to fix that is switch to use the national national blend curve. Um, instead of superline, we're not going to actually use the the temperatures, you know, plopping the temperatures in the forecast yet at this point. It's just using the curve to help because uh, the national blend has three hourly data all the way out through uh, all the way out through day seven, and this will fix that speckling issue. I've I ran tests on it that that you know when superline was doing that national blend switch, it fixes it. So, uh, but because Hourly temperatures have so much impact on various things of the forecast, such as snow amounts, ice cream, P type hazards. We're going to set a turnkey date on this, February 1st. It would be built into the code 12Z on that day, um, so that way we can maintain some office-to-office -office consistency here. Um, that should also give 
quite a bit of time too for getting the tech order um, tech order installed. And uh, a, a few other things here. Uh, we're going to get uh, we're, uh, providing a new new procedure is one I kind of wrote up after some feedback from inside the office, but. You know, a lot of times that you run, the, when the forecast builder runs, that you're like, okay, what changed in my forecast? Or what, you know, you, 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 you like, you kind of, it's a, it's a black, kind of a black box. So if you, this, uh, there's this new procedure provided called big swing changes that you can compare uh, either, you know, the current forecast or previous or whatever to like the super blend or the national blend. And basically what we'll do is we'll, and go through and highlight grids that have significant changes to them. Right now, I've got it built in for max T, min T, pop, and QPF. Uh, but it might be a you know a way to kind of look at targets of opportunity, if you will, something that's dramatically changing. Uh, another thing that well, uh, I know Jerry's been working working hard to squeeze in is some pop improvements. So we kind of alluded to this in the last uh, last webinar using the neighborhood pop technique uh, to improve some pops on the upper end for small amounts of QPF. And uh, it definitely shows a lot of promise. Uh, so I'll be looking, be looking for that to get into this, uh, hopefully into this tech order. Again, we're really, really shooting for it. So I think that's it for the tech order, <laughs> tech order updates. I know it's a lot of, a lot of stuff um, coming out. Again, this is all from the very variety of feedback that you've all uh, you've all provided uh, over the last uh, you know, month since this uh, project started a couple months ago. Uh, I, at this at this point, I will I'm going to open it up again to questions on any of these updates. Uh, if you um, want any more info, just raise your hand. Oh, I got one. Yep, sure do. Yeah. Uh, Sally, I have you un unmuted. Okay, I uh, Sally, are you there? Okay, well, she did write the question in. Uh, okay. Oh, the, the mic doesn't work, she says, so she is listening. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> The question was on prob ice. When the prob ice is zero and the pop is anything above 15%, mm -hmm. how can the peak type be anything but drizzle or freezing drizzle? And yeah. then there's, there's also barring convection and tropical co collision coalescence. If your ice bearing layer is dry, you cannot get rain, snow, sleet, correct? If this is the case, then if a point has a 30% pop with zero prob ice, what would the p-type be? So there's a lot of questions there. <laughs> gotcha. Actually, I'm going to have Dan sitting over here by me if he wants to yeah, explain. Well, once the pr probability of ice is zero, I think I think what you stated there is correct, that you can't get the different mix types. It would be an all-liquid solution. So that would either be drizzle or freezing drizzle, or if you have a deep enough layer, you know, we, we targeted that one kilometer and 85% relative humidity based on some sounding research we did. But the deeper you make that layer, the more cloud water there is available to, to grow the drops via collision coalescence. So, you know, you get to two kilometers, three kilometers, and you're still not anywhere in the ice range for, for introducing ice. You're, you're going to be going to more of a rain or freezing rain scenario there. Um, it's just more of a non-classic freezing rain situation where you don't have the deep uh, deep cloud ice with the warm layer um, and then the shallow cold layer. So it's going to be an all liquid solution, drizzle, freezing drizzle, and if your cloud layer is deep enough, saturated layer is deep enough, it'll go to more of a rain, freezing rain. Right. Sally says, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Any other any other questions at this point? Okay. All right, let me uh let me continue on then here.
All right, some outstanding science issues. One, um, you know, just going back to the number of weather types, and I tell you, when when this whole issue came out of the Christmas this Christmas storm with some offices having some failures because of too many weather types, it's like this is just another example here of where we really need to simp you know need to simplify uh, the the weather types in some way. And one way, of course, would be to you know shower versus stratiform, drizzle versus rain. If you could just go you know, just call all drizzle rain, call anything stratif you know, showery stratiform and just, you know, keep it simple. That would, you know, those are, those are things that would greatly, <clears throat> greatly help. Um, <clears throat> days four through seven top down stuff. Um, in the, in the up, I was not listed in the previous slides, but for forecast builder, what in the, in the update, you will see an alert that comes up if you have top-down grids out there. Just kind of an, a situational awareness tool, since I know, you know, maybe you didn't realize, maybe the previous shift um, didn't communicate that they put some top-down grids out there. So this will alert you to it um, if there are anything, or if there are any grids. And then one other thing, going back to the number of weather types, <clears throat> is that the uh, grid, t uh, our grid team here is is looking at the possibility of adding a wintry mix type to the weather weather grid because, uh, and I know this came out through feedback um, as well. Uh, you know, when you get all these types mixed together, man, I tell you, it just makes the weather grid a disaster. I mean, we're trying to like fit fit new science and all this into a older C11 type situation and kind of, you know kind of stuck, so it would be really nice to have this uh, wintry mix situation. Uh, to, to, to add it, though, I mean, you're looking at probably two winters down the road um, before it would happen. Uh, but, I mean, if you, it, it's never going to happen if you don't start, so you know, that's what we're kind of, you know, thinking about this. And, and this recommendation hasn't just come from... <laughs> From us either, or less looking for it. It's come from other other teams as well that we need to have like something something to help with this. And I mean, you look at NDFD viewer, it has mix. You look at point and click, it can do mix. Uh, oh, um, or this point and click do entry mix. I don't know if entry mix is there, but at least on the NDFD viewer, they handle it as a mix. So you know, maybe we should get go down that route for the weather grid too. Uh, kind of did some. The grid team's done some research on this about the time periods in GFE um, because I know there's been feedback that's come through that, you know, would like to have forecast builder match that of the time periods that are shown in the grid manager in GFE. But that varies quite a bit, um, not just central region, but weather service as a whole. Uh, you know, where does day seven exist and where does day four, where does day three you know, the only thing probably about everything's agreed on is like today, tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow night. Um, beyond that, it's a hodgepodge. Uh, so that's something maybe we'll try to address in the February tech order, but <laughs> it, it, it's a bigger one than I could try and fit in this January one anyway. Uh, digital aviation, looking again at weather intensity definitions, uh, see if we can link up there. Uh, snow, level, snow level stuff. Uh, uh, let's see here. Tomorrow, we're uh, a couple of us from the forecast builder good team, and, and then others, uh, even into western region, going to have a call uh, looking at P type stuff and snow level if they're like that. Uh, trying to work on work on that uh, issue. Jump to a different issue here: timeliness. Uh, this has kind of come up a little bit from. You know, from NDFD itself, I'm sure that other regions might get notified as well. Um, seeing some common, uh, I guess, some some timeliness issues, some and some common problems when I've looked at uh, these timeliness maps over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, some things usually stand out. Um, like I've, you know, this is the latest graphic. I mean, I know that you're not required to have all the grids for through. Through the day seven and the new snow ice and then all that till till later in the day, but I just wanted to grab the snapshot for now. Uh, some common ones might be a missing like the missing wave height for the uh, the extension might be two missing wave heights, so that's be because for the Great Lakes offices. Uh, sometimes a miss uh, like 
Well, once in a while, it'll be a variety of different offices that would miss a zero Z day eight weather grid um, would wouldn't be on there. And then a four, a few might be some sometimes missing the the entire new day stepping. Uh, so a couple of hints, you know, just check your finalized procedure. If your finalized procedure is doing a completeness check, you know, see if it has that. that make sure it has that day eight. Um, and then when you're doing, a, let's say weather, for example. Uh, if you choose the highlighted grids, make sure that highlight area goes out to zero Z day eight. And something important here to note, especially with the next point and click upgrade, um, that um, missing grids can cause point and click problems. Uh, I think the next the, uh, the next point and click upgrade will be that if if there's a missing grid, uh, it will revert to the ZFP. Uh, so just keep that just keep that in mind. Uh, that we need to make sure that the have the time in us there. Um, quickly on targets of opportunity, uh, looks there's going to be a document and a regional presentation should be later later this month. Uh, the consistency team I know has been working on it as well uh, quite a bit. So uh, basically, it's going to be a comprehensive and thorough. Uh, Discussion on this uh, on this topic for target opportunity. Again, when you're going after the grids, you know, again, trying to look for those that are going to change your message, uh, or maybe you have to do a hazard. Uh, and something that can help move you along quicker is just try and get that collaboration started before the, the you know before the cron runs. Like if you see again, see it. Like I know we've got this ice storm coming up uh, potentially at you know, towards towards the weekend, you know, get that discussion rolling before the cron runs. Uh, let's see, you know, we've got um, another pro project going on with this hazard builder thing. You might be hearing from that um, more here in the next couple months. Uh, let's see here. I know we've had a feedback request on this. It's a bigger project to redesign forecast builder to put a back button. I like it. I just got to, you know, it's just going to talk going to require a lot of code rewrite um, to actually build the GUIs. And then uh, we're also investigating to switch to the NBM for some of the elements. Uh, there's some pretty good performance out of version 2 that we've seen. Uh, so the grid team, you know, we're, we're kind of discussing this. Uh, so just, uh, again, it's in the future development section. For the feedback feedback form, uh, good good job everybody responding. Uh, we got a lot of responses, 715 already. That's awesome. Uh, you know, some of the grid team members are trying to read you know read these you know routinely, um, you know on a daily daily if possible. Uh, and again, if, if you if you want some fast feedback, certainly just email that you know nws.forecastbuilder or go to the VLab. Um, B-Lab forum, and we'll get to those, you know, immediately. But certainly, you know, one nice thing with all these feedback forums is that we can look for common common issues, and those get up, go into these monthly tech orders. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, tracking anything that's a, a problem, and you know, certainly if you run into error messages, you can always rerun the forecast builder install, and it doesn't take long. Just run through it, and uh, maybe it takes a couple minutes, and you're done. If there's something about updated outside of a tech order. Um, let's see. Here. Almost at the end of the in the presentation here. Uh, just a reminder for the forecasters. You know, we've we've <laughs> getting hit with a lot of a uh, lot of mixed precip events here over the past month, and it looks like it's there's no stopping to it. So. Certainly, especially for the forecasters that may have not run into a, one of these mixed P-type events yet, maybe you're going to come into your first. You know, certainly take that time now to review the top review the top-down training. Again, be looking for that new prob ice coming out. Uh, also, of note here, um, myself as well as Dan Baumgart and a few others from the grid team are going to be going out to the AMS conference. Uh, I'll be certainly, you know, still. Maintain a look at email, but my availability will be a little less during that uh, that time period, uh, January 26 to the 26. Uh, but if you know if you're out there, certainly we can discuss uh, your experiences with forecast builder in that. And with that, uh, I would I'm going to open it up to any questions. And on the uh, one one last thing is on the right, I have a map of all the uh, 
forecast builder offices that are participating participating. Let me know if right you know during this open open session if this is incorrect for your office. You know, it's certainly certainly not with this weather weather uh performance improvement, what uh weather creation performance improvement. We uh, you know It'd be really nice to get everybody to fall. Uh, understandably, I know there might be some lot differences, but if you get to the full, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, if you if there's uh, yeah, any differences here on that map to your office, uh, let me know. Okay, uh, we I think I'm uh, Ben Moyer. You had a question. I think you have to put in your audio pin before you can speak, or I can go ahead and just ask the question. Um, uh, let's see, Ben had two questions. The first one is, will big swing changes allow for an easy revert to the original forecast? That is, uh, max or min temperatures. Uh, um, it, it, will not, it will not revert to the previous forecast, but it, uh, it will at least identify um, where, there was a, um, where there was a big change. I think I, I think uh, a five degree change will highlight yellow and then a 10 degree change will highlight red. Uh, hopefully you don't see that crazy, but it's there. Um, like I say, it's more of an, it's just an SA tool, it's, yeah, it's not gonna revert. Certainly if you wanted to revert to the previous forecast, that would be a collaboration thing to do with your neighbors. <laughs> Okay, and he asked, how will simplification of showers versus stratiform precipitation impact TAFs? Um, you know, that's certainly something else that would have to be discussed. I think uh, I would have to look more into the, how the, that impacts the digital, digital aviation, you know, the aviation community. Uh, instead of, you know, instead of a shower being referenced in your TAF, it would just have, minus, you know, minus RA, for example. So. Okay, so a little more has to be done on that. Okay, um, let's see, I don't think there's any other, uh, except just so you know, um, you know, Paducah is now using the full, and as is Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, Aaron Johnson raised his hand here, so. Okay, uh, sure can, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. I saw the slide there about uh, DSS, consistency back to grids, but in many ways DSS has moved beyond just deterministic grids as we're providing a range of solutions. Um, so I'm a little confused by what is meant by that because in many cases the deterministic stuff that we have may fall within a range of solutions, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're communicating that option. So I was just kind of curious what that meant because to me, DSS has moved beyond just the single deterministic value that may be in the grids. Thanks. Yeah. Um, actually, can you, can you start off the beginning? Uh, I must have missed somehow. The, the, can you ask this, the beginning of that question? I'm going to try and go back and go back through the um, slide set to see where that, was, where that was referenced there. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Well, the, the slide there that talked about uh, DSS and consistency back with the grids and targets of opportunity. Oh, the, okay. My point was what's really okay. meant by that because DSS has moved beyond oh, just yeah. a deterministic value anyway, so I'm not necessarily, yeah. if our messaging goes beyond what the grids are, that doesn't necessarily mean that's not within the range of solutions. So to me that that's very kind of vague because we may provide with our communication a range of solutions yeah. based off of whatever's going on. And so to me, it seems like we're we're narrowing it back down to one deterministic value, whereas DSS isn't, and frequently is not uh, deterministic. Yeah, I think stuff. I think more of this is more on the on the lines of where to where to look at look at the look at the grid set and see which what's worth almost like what's worth changing, like where we get you know it you know if you have like some you know major you know um, not major we I mean well I'll use a simple Simple answer would be winter storm or some fire weather event or whatever um, that you want to be, you know, targeting those, you know, targeting those grids because they would they could change the message of that event. You know, maybe you need to make it a, you know, a warmer solution or you need to increase the winds to result in more of a blowing snow problem. Or I, uh, I'm I'm hoping that kind of 
I'm hoping that gets get to that because I, I agree I agree with you that the message that the message in that yeah that our forecast is still pretty much a determinist deterministic and that we can use our message in for to explain a variety of um, situations but more of this discussion is more of just how to identify um, what what we should change hey Aaron this is Jerry Wiedenfog. Um another thing that's coming out with this techno um, is actually showing uh, standard deviation grids from cons all and cons raw and right now that's all it's going to show but our plan is to be able to use that standard deviation to show some uncertainty where the models you know might be deviating the standard deviation would be much higher so that's one way that we thought that we might be able to handle some of the you know uncertainty in the forecast and maybe use that as a DSS tool so that's one of the things that we're trying to go down the road of. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, that just, you know, and sometimes the the range of solutions goes beyond the range of model solutions. So just a thought there that uh, I'd hate to get too picky on trying to drive a deterministic grid back based off of how we're messaging uh, the potential outcomes of events because sometimes they go beyond even what a range of 30 some odd ensembles may show. So um, I, it seemed like that was kind of vague and I don't know if we were kind of going back to where we should be actually moving forward. So anyway, thank you guys. Yeah, no, no problem, Aaron. And just to add to your map a little bit more, uh, Grand Island, Omaha, and Jackson are all using the full version now. questions I think I see um, I think I got there's a couple on there uh, do I see that from Rick Ewald on there I, I am unmuted here um, Rick Rick uh, did you have a question no we just wanted to let you know that we uh Oh, okay. The full okay, cool. Um, okay. Cool. All right. Any other uh, qu questions out there? Hey, uh, Andy. This is Chuck. Yep. I uh. I wanted to let everybody know that we are also considering when we get back to the uh, shower versus stratiform uh, area of, of discussion, I think we are also considering as a team whether or not we can take advantage of the, uh, the POT uh, thunder grid to provide for uh, a, dis a discriminator between uh, shower and uh, stratiform as well. So there could be some options coming down the line with that as well. That, that's going to be one of our, our future experiments to see if we can do that. So there might be an easier way to simplify it without just uh, getting rid of it. So that would still serve DAS purposes and uh, maintain the, the tradition of, of having shower and stratiform uh, as part of our forecast. All right. Um, anybody for the um, southern southern part of the region with this upcoming uh, storm? Uh, any any questions with, in that regard? Uh, with forecast builder and using it for this upcoming one, uh, certainly staff wise or anything like that. I mean, if if you guys, you know, if you guys have questions, um, you know, feel you know, feel free to email that NWS forecast builder. Heck, I mean, you could even post a note on this CRG MAT room if you want in the NWS chat. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that as as well um, as we go into this uh, in a storm. If uh, certainly forecasters have questions. Okay. Uh -huh. Very 
good. Anything else? No. Andy, and Chuck? I guess lastly, um, you know, feel free to send us, uh, you know, send this webinar along to your, uh, to your staff, or we'll share, we'll share this. What we'll do is we'll share this slide set um, with, uh, with, every, with all of you, and then uh, that you can share them to your staff. And then, of course, the, it's on our view, the recording that we'll get on the View Lab site. So yeah, be looking forward to the, this January upgrade and get a whole bunch of new stuff. And what will the date be again when it'll be released? Uh, well, we're going to shoot for, it, it's kind of pending our national SmartNet release, which uh, yeah, at the top of the hour here we'll, we'll be, that's what we're talking about. Hopefully get that out today, hopefully today or tomorrow. And then this will get out to the test bed office, test bed offices for testing. We'll do about a week of that. Uh, and then we'll get the rest of the region um, then right up you know after that so we should be looking at hopefully middle to end of next week for our, all the rest of the region to be able to install very good well Andy Chuck thanks again for all your work and thank you everyone for joining us today and uh, have a good day bye-bye thanks John